This is your brother David Williams with Jesus Ministries. Uh, may the Lord give all of you who are faithful power to continue in the faith. Uh, may the Lord give all of you who are watching this power to continue in the faith. Uh, just because people start in the faith don't mean that they stay focused. Uh, essentially, my question, the first question that we're going to pose today to the viewers, those of you who are coming in, is what it is, is what do you believe? That's the first question. What do you believe? Do you believe that your environment is heavily controlled by things that you cannot see? How sincerely would you say that you believe that? We need to ask ourselves that question. How genuine am I when I say that I, that, that I believe that there is a God or and that there's a devil? Like how genuine are you about faith? There is a physical world and a spiritual world. In one sense, we could say that they overlap. But in another sense, they don't overlap. It's really one existence with different phases. So no matter the state of matter, whether it's solid, liquid, or gas, or plasma, these four states of matter, all of that is material creation. All of matter is feelable. Solid, liquid, gas. So it's all identifiable. And then you have that which is greater. You have the microscopic, the subparticle. The subparticles, that part, the laws, the laws. So there are various phases of existence. You've got the physical phases and the spiritual phases. The physical phases are a result of the spiritual stuff. Faith explains that to us. So our faith in God informs us that what we are seeing with our physical eyes is not all that there is. Our faith tells us that. Many of us don't believe that. One of the ways that we know that we believe that is when we take God's word seriously. And we take it seriously. You ever wonder why this is so thick? Like, why is this so thick? Why is this volume of information so thick? There's several reasons. One of the reasons why this volume of information is so thick is because there are so many laws and occurrences that show us that the physical world is not all that there is. The physical world is not the main world. How difficult it is to convince people that the physical world is not the main world. That's why we, that's why we fight with surrendering things that we're not supposed to have. That's why it's so difficult for us to identify reality from vanity. What's real? What is reality? It's so difficult for us to identify reality because we don't acknowledge that there's a spiritual world. We say that we believe it. But we don't actually act 
you don't we don't act like the physical world is not the main world. We don't act we don't so we say that we believe that there's a God, there's a devil, there are angels and demons, there's blessings and curses. But what would our lives, what would our daily lives be like if we lived like we really believed that the physical world, what we see with our eyes, hear with our ears, smell with our noses, taste with our mouths, touch with our hands. What if, what, what, would, it, what would your life be like? What would our lives be like if we lived, if we made decisions based on our awareness that, no, what I see is not all that there is. And I am making decisions that affect me based on laws I don't understand unless I'm being guided. Unless I'm being guided. If I'm, because you and me, we're designed to make decisions based on what things look like, sound like, smell like, taste like, feel like. Please recognize that. Brother Dave, Brother Dave is begging you. I'm begging you to recognize the fact that you are biologically designed to concentrate on the material world even though there's another one, even though there's a greater one, even though the world that you can't see is in control of the world that you can see. There are all kinds of social laws that we don't understand and so we mess up relationships. How much more spiritual laws? Let me say that again. There are all kinds of, okay, so there are laws of human interaction that vary from culture to culture, generation to generation, that we don't understand. And because we don't understand those laws, we ruin relationships. And we don't know how to maintain healthy relationships as we ought to gain healthy relationships as we ought to. There are laws of our own identities that we don't know how to operate so we don't really know what decisions are going to affect us in what way so how much more a dimension that is greater okay so we've got the physical dimension and the spiritual dimension can i convince you of that as you're watching this i because that's what i'm saying so that's so this right here this is thick right here because there are a lot of circumstances and, 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 and a lot of truth. There are a lot of statements that are designed to give you an advantage. Everything written in here is to realign you with what's really going on. The, 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 the information and the incidences covered in these pages are designed to give you the upper hand give you a pattern, explain things to you. This is why that's happening in your life. That's, this is why that's happening in her life. This is why that's happening in his life. Because when things happen, we shrug our shoulders and throw up our hands and we just shake our head like, oh, man, I, t I don't even know. You can go into churches right now. If there's an active service somewhere in America or all over the world, you can go into a church service, turn on someone's video talking about God or religious stuff. And, you, and most of the time, you're going to hear outright confusion. You're going to hear outright confusion, especially when tragedy occurs, especially when tragedy occurs or when things occur that most people in that society don't want to occur. You're going to hear confusion. You're going to hear confusion from the political people, from the social welfare people, from the activists, from the religious people. Like, yeah, we just don't know. We're just going to pray. What do you mean you just don't know? Uh, why, why, would, why would you, why would I, why, why would we listen to people who are admitting that they have no idea what, make li what makes life work? 
okay, so we so fine. We say, well, they may not know exactly how life works, but they they know enough. Nobody exactly knows, but we know enough. What is our definition of enough? That guy has a nice tie, a nice shirt, a nice suit, lives in a nice house, has a nice dog, and he's well-renowned, well-respected, and he's on this television show. He's on this talk show. He's on this news channel. Hello, this is Mike Jenkins. This is Mike Vickers from BLN News. Tonight in Thailand, there was a mudslide. They had no idea why it happened. It happens every year. It killed 300 people. And the rest are in dire need of support. And you say, that guy, he knows what he's talking about because he told me what happened in Thailand. I want to be like that guy. I want to be like Mike Vickers. I want a profession like him. So we judge the fact that, oh, that guy knows what he's talking about. Because he has a nice suit, a nice tie, a nice shirt. She knows what she's talking about because she has a nice dress. He knows what he's talking about because other people who are just as confused as he is, they support, promote, embrace, and like him. Oh, yeah, man, that guy knows what he's talking about. Look at his wife. Look at, look at her husband. Look at their, all the girls that like him. Look at all the guys that like her. Look at all the people that support her. Yeah, but when they hang themselves or get or, 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 or when they're caught, drunk in public or arrested because of how they treat their spouse or their kids or their dog or something crazy then we're all shocked and shake our heads and we say see you just never know okay well yeah so that really messes us up like so so but we were impressed with his wallet, with her purse. We were impressed with his position and with that person's achievements and accomplishments. And so we spent years trying to be like him, only for him to be a, a wreck, an emotional wreck, a mental wreck. So why? S success is not measured by your acquisition of material things because you can be a murderer and acquire stuff. Like I can be a crazy person and get stuff. If I if my guns are big enough, if my if my knowledge if my intellect is sharp enough, I don't have to know the laws of existence in order to get things. The word of God says that we will all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. So first of all, we need to respect the fact that anybody, not anybody, but the skilled and the savvy or the physically beautiful or the strong can get things. You can be Adolf Hitler or Joseph Stalin. You can be some powerful, destructive person and everybody want to be like you because it seems like you're on top of the world until you die. And then when most people try to do what you've done, they fail and you're now dead and now you have to stand before Almighty God and proof that you're going to be judged as unfaithful is the fact that if people try to emulate what you do, they, they suffer. That's one of the ways that we know. Like, what if I try to do what that guy is doing? Is my life going to be successful or, or, or full of pain and suffering? That's one of the ways that we know. What if men attempt to be like Jesus? Are they going to have an advantage or are, are they going to have a disadvantage? What if we blend in that we desire to be like Jesus and like Anderson Cooper? Uh, like Jesus... And like, I don't know, Robert De Niro. Like Jesus and like Vladimir Putin. Like Jesus and like this other person over here. So we are living in a very
delicate, critical time frame. Very, very, very delicate, very critical time frame we're living in. And what we are not regarding is the fact that we are constantly interacting with a, a world that we don't understand not because we can't understand, but because we ignore the basis for understanding. We ignore our point of access to understanding. So, God is not unrighteous. God didn't make you so that you don't understand. God didn't create you so that you live a confused life. All of us are responsible for committing to our access to God. Every one of us. All of us are responsible for committing to the fact that we, you, have access to God. Every one of us. You're all responsible for surrendering to the fact that you have access to the God that made you. Because God did not put you in a jungle to be devoured by the beasts in the forest. He didn't put you, he didn't make you so that you're a prey, a victim. You were not built, nor were you designed in the image of God for you to live at at a disadvantage so you are not created to live as a failure you are going to be judged by God for the things you say and do so under no circumstance can you think that God's gonna give you eternal life or eternal punishment while having positions you at a disadvantage so if I'm confused how can I be eternally punished for the decisions I make if I'm confused how can I be eternally rewarded for the decisions that I make because we are either going to be eternally eternally rewarded for the decisions we make or eternally punished for the decisions we make and if my decisions have such an eternal impact on my life and on the lives of others. I can't charge God with being unfaithful by saying he's left me at a disadvantage. He doesn't talk to me. He doesn't explain things to me. He's not making things clear enough. Yes, he is. To say that he's not doing that, to say that you don't have access, is to say that you are more righteous than he is and that he's a liar. That's what you're saying. That's what we're saying. When we justify our ignorance or confusion, we are charging God with unrighteousness. Oh, he's not right. He's, he's evil. Because he gave me all these responsibilities. He's going to judge me. And yet I don't even know my left hand from my right. I don't even know up from down. My life is just subject to random, arbitrary, incidental effect. No, man. No, woman. It's not like that. It's not like that. It's not like that. To assess it that way is to consider yourself wiser and more moral than God. Oh, I'm moral. I am saying that I don't have what I need and apparently I'm going to be judged and held accountable for the decisions I make, though I've not been prepared. When parents have children, they send their kids to school and they get their kids' reports on their device, on an email or on some application or on the paper. The child brings home bad grades. The parent wants to know why the child is bringing home bad grades. What's going on? What's going on, little Jimmy? 
how did you get bad grades? Now, why is the parent concerned? Because the parent is afraid that their child is not learning the skills necessary for life. The parent wants their child to learn the skills necessary for life. They want to know that their child is developing psychologically and emotionally and physically. They want to know that because they love the child. They are invested in the development of the child. They want the child to develop because the child is a reflection of them. And because of their love for the child, they are happy when the child is safe, sad when the child is in danger. So they want to know that their child is doing well. They want to know that their child has an advantage. They want to know that their child is navigating life well. So when that child brings home bad grades, the parent, for a variety of reasons, is concerned. Jimmy, what's going on with this paperwork? What's going on with what I saw on the school app? What happened? What, what happened with these tests? What's going on? If the child says to the parent, Dad, Mom, there were no preparations. The teacher didn't even teach this. The tests we were taking, we didn't even review the material. The parent will likely question that. Like, Whoa, what are you talking about? A part of them, a part of the parent wants to believe the child. Another part of the parent wants a reason for why their child is failing. So one part of the parent says, that's not how school works. That's not how education works. That's not how life works. No, life doesn't give you tests that you're unprepared for. The teacher, Mr. Edwards, would not have done that. He's a professional. He knows that it's his job to educate you, not to position you to fail. We think Mr. Edwards is wiser and smarter and more righteous than God. No, Mr. Edwards would not do that. He would have taught you what, you, what he would have tested you on. He would have prepared you for what he would have tested you on. That, no. But then another part of you, in defense of your child and, uh, and in defense of your own honor, says, well, I hope my kid is right. Because I don't want to believe my kid is incapable of doing work. So in one sense, I want to know that Mr. Edwards is right. In another, because I want to know that righteousness is going on. In another sense, I want to know that my kid is right. Because I want to know that my kid is not dumb. So I'm trying to defend me, but I'm also trying to defend Mr. Edwards. No, no. That's not true. Is it? Daddy, Mommy, M Ma, Ma, Dad, I'm telling you, the work that we that were tested on, we didn't review. The parent, with a sense of confusion, says, give me a second. I'm going to get to the bottom of this. Do you call right now. Call some people. Figure out what's going on. Okay, what's happening right here? All right, good. Let's find out what's going on. All right, let's see. Hello, Mr. Edwards. I was just wondering about this test situation right here. My kid is... Not doing well. What's going on? He said he said you didn't train him. I know that's not true, right? What's going on with him? Because I know he wouldn't be failing. What's going on? Yeah, so people want answers. Why do we want answers? Because we are designed to have them. We are designed to want what we are designed to have. And we want answers because we are made in the image of God. So we want to know what's going on in our world because we feel as though it's right to know what's going on in our world. And because we know that it's right to know what's going on in our world, we desire to know and we work to know. But it's not... We, we are not to be concentrated on 
our desire to know how to control our world. We're supposed to be concentrated on God. And God is driving us to want to know him and who he is and what he expects and how we're supposed to be interacting with him. The Spirit of God is driving us. He's moving us, compelling us. But in that, there are distractions. There are unclean, evil, dangerous spirits in our environment that are attempting to prevent us from having peace, prosperity, love, health, because you are made in the image of God. Because you are made in the image of God, you have enemies that you cannot see. Because you are made in the image of God, you've got support that you cannot see. When you obey God, you will become more aware of the opposition that you cannot see. And you will become more aware of the support that you cannot see. The more faithful you are to the fact that God is talking to you in his word, the more knowledge he's going to give you of what's happening around you and you will grow and realize that wait a second life is not as confusing as I initially thought it was as I keep hearing that it is because we are hearing that life is confusing and hard and dangerous from people who are ignoring God so people whose lives are chaotic they are telling us about how life is. They're telling us that life is messed up because they're ignoring God and they're experiencing a result of ignoring God. So their life, their life, yeah, your life is messed up because you pick and choose what to do as it relates to God's standards versus your own. So yeah. I mean, if Brother Dave wants to make a cake, if I want to make a lasagna, I want to make a lasagna, and I want to put nails in it, metal nails and screws in it, and then I want to put ricotta cheese in it, and some very seasoned tomato sauce, and I also want to put in some blow pops, charms blow pops, and I want to put some cheese some really fine expensive whatever kind of cheese parmesan cheese whatever kind of cheese goes along with that provolone cheddar oh man this guy is yeah you know some 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 parsley in there and some uh you know soda absolutely you know like coke coca-cola you know, man, you're not going to say David makes an awesome lasagna. You're not going to say that. Hey, you know, have you ever had my lasagna? Listen, it is to die from. I mean, to die for. No, man, when David makes Parmesan, whatever I'm making, chicken Parmesan, I'm going to make it to everyone's taste. Yeah, I'm going to put some, you know, motor oil in it. And I'm also going to put onions. So if you want to if you want to live life like that and then you want to get all confused about the outcome, it that that that's deception, guys and gals. That's deception. We don't even know, but we can. And that's what makes things harder for us because you don't know, but you can know. You, you, you don't know, but you can know. And that's what makes life hard. So when, when we want to pick and choose what to say and do, when we want to pick and choose how to interact with God, what to obey and what not to obey, 
Oh, no, no, I do serve God because I do this. That's true. But you also do that right there. Hey, nobody's perfect. That's right. So if I invite you over my house and I put a little WD-40 in the soda that I give to you, that's my response too. Yeah, man, I put a little WD-40 in there. Like, oh, this, what kind of soda is this? Oh, that's, yeah, no, nah, it's the Sprite. You asked for Sprite. I told you I had Coke products. I told you I had Pepsi products. Like, I had some Sprite in there, some Mountain Dew. You said Sprite, right? I like, got some Sprite. Yeah, but it tastes different. Oh, that's my special recipe. A little WD-40 in there. Like, you put WD-40 in your Sprite? Like, yeah, man. Man, that's poison. Like, yo, nobody's perfect. Nobody's perfect. Come on, man. You You want me to... I like it that way. You don't like it that way? Come on. I put a little aspirin in there for you. A little aspirin in there. In, 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 in the fruit cocktail. I'll give you a little fruit cocktail. Put a little aspirin in there. So we want to pick and choose. We want to add some Jesus and some other stuff in there. And then when the outcome is like poisonous, we want to shake our heads and charge God with criminal, like criminal behavior. Oh, God's not good. No, God's not good. Life is not good. You never know what's going to happen. You just it's, it's a rough world out here. It's just, you know. You don't know what's going to happen. Life is crazy, man. Bad things could just happen randomly. Bad things could just happen randomly. You know, it can just happen randomly because, you know, God's not good. God made this chaotic world that where random bad things can just happen without knowing, without warning. That's what we're saying. And it is because we refuse to go to God for answers. That's basically the problem. We refuse to go to God for constant development we refuse so because we don't believe because we we make decisions based on what we believe we make decisions based on what we believe and our beliefs either come from God or from our own assessment of the world. That's it. Your beliefs either come from God or from your own assessment, your, I, your independent assessment of the world, exclusive of God's word. God says this, you think that, simple as that, some things you agree with, other things you disagree with. Many are not, are not crazy enough to say that, they'll just act it out. Oh, hey, amen, that's right, that's right, amen, that's right, you know, Pastor Cavassier, pa Pastor, pass the tarot cards, amen, listen. God is good all the time. God is good all the time. And I'm a Virgo. So I know I'm going to have a good week. I'm a Virgo. I, God is good. God is awesome. God loves me so much. And I love God. And, and you know, you got to walk in the spirit of God so he can bless your life. And if you're a, a Sagittarius, you better watch out for those Aries out there because those are not a good mix. You don't know that people do that? You don't know. You don't know that that's what we're, that that's where our minds are. You don't know that they, that we're confused like that. Hey, man, Jesus is Lord. Do you understand that? And um, if you have bad karma, it's gonna make your life hard. Like, what are you talking about? How did you just mix the lordship of Jesus with Hinduism? Talking about some karma. Listen, I pray every day. I pray. I do my yoga. I jump rope. Right. Say my Buddhist chants. Sign myself with Catholic stuff. And I go to work ready to prosper because the word of God says that he gives me power to get wealth. You don't recognize the fact that you live in a confused, uh, confused world where people are ignoring Jesus. They are. That's what's happening, guys. We don't we don't believe Jesus. If, if we don't believe him. If we just talk. So when crazy things happen at a, on a mass scale or in your personal life, 
you don't even have a track record as to why thing you don't you, you don't have a because because we because we are erratic in how we obey the Lord because we don't we're not consistent in our obedience of the truth when things break down if you don't follow a set system and you're mixing systems well what 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 system just caused that problem right there what addition caused that problem right there i remember someone made us some banana pudding someone made us some banana pudding and there were parts of it that were delicious parts of the banana pudding that were delicious like oh man that's delicious but then there was a weird taste it was a weird taste. So, oh, you know, you're taking scoops full. Oh, that, well, that was good. Man, this is the best banana pudding I've ever had. And then you just scoop like, oh. Okay. Well, what was up with that bite? Hmm. Let's try again. You know, the fourth scoop, the fifth scoop, sixth scoop, seventh scoop. Whoa. And so you look at the preparer of it and you say hey man this is really good banana pudding what did you put in it and oh yeah man well uh you know bananas obviously and uh i ripen them and then um you know a little flour to kind of make it a bit thicker and then that's a pudding part and then a little nutmeg right a little nutmeg a little this right here whatever goes in banana pudding i don't know uh, you know, little vanilla wafers, vanilla wafers, you know, let them get a little old, but not too old to the point that they're stale, you know, and the strawberries, and you say, man, all of that is good stuff, and that's delicious, oh, oh, yeah, and white grapes, like, oh, I like white grapes, but in this banana pudding, it took it left, it took it left. What if the guy would have said, man, I have no idea what I put in there. I was following the recipe for banana pudding. I was following the recipe for, you know, chocolate cake. I was following the recipe for ice cream. I was following the recipe for, I was following several. Don't you, do, do, we, do we agree that this is a recipe book? Do, we, do, we believe, do you believe that this is a recipe book? So do, do do you think that this is a recipe book, a book that when you follow its prescriptions brings you to a specific articulated point? Like, do you believe that or do you believe that you can, do you believe you're going to have chocolate chip cookies if you include aspects, contradicting aspects of other recipes now while that might sound ridiculous we live that daily most of us why do you think Jesus said broad is the way and wide is the path that leads to destruction and many there be which are going that way oh yeah yeah man the gate into life is narrow and the pathway is very it's very thin Road, straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leads to life. Few are going to find it because we, because, so why are few going to find the way of life and most going to find the way of destruction? Because most are adding all kinds of things to God's expectations. They're adding their own expectations. Okay, so most people f believe that they themselves are free to make decisions based on how they assess the world around them. Oh, yeah, yeah, man. So I'm going to do this. Oh, why? Why are you going to do that? Mm, I'm just going to. Like, well, what's that going to lead to? 
So we make decisions and we assume that our decisions are going to bring about a certain result within a certain time frame. And we are judging that based on our own evaluation of our own experiences and our understanding of how things work. And we are also judging that by the people around us who are making decisions and how things seem to be playing out for them. Oh, that's how they got their first home. That's how he found that wife. That's how she got that car. That's how he got that jacket. That's how he got that much money in his bank account. That's how he built that business. Yeah, so that's the end that I want. This is the system I'm going to apply to get to that end. And he's smiling. She's smiling. He's got a serious but confident facial expression. He's physically built. That all looks good. And we are used to looking at things from a very limited, superficial perspective. What is the end of that man going to be? What's the end of that woman going to be? What's going to be the result of attempting to apply that person's standards for life when you do it? When you do what you see and what you assess as safe, how are things going to work out for you? When entire societies implement their cultural beliefs, how do their cultural beliefs impact them within a 25-year to 50-year time frame? How? Don't you think you should know? Don't you think you should know? So, here in America, we say it's best a, to have children late in life, in your 30s, after you've made all the money, got all the education, and all of that, got your own house and everything. We say, oh, you know, you want to have kids in your 30s. And, if, and, if, and at maximum, you want to have two. One boy, one girl, that's it. That's the recipe for social and financial success, right? I want two kids, one boy, one girl, if possible. And I want to wait until I've accomplished everything that I can. That's what you say. And so then you have an influx of people from another part of the world who come in. And that's not their code. Their code is marry young and have as many kids as possible. Have as many children as possible. Marry young and have like seven kids. That's their code. And so while you're living your American code in about 25 years to 50 years, you will be grossly outnumbered by people who despise you. And your children are going to be greatly outnumbered by people who are being taught the exact opposite from what they're being taught. And in 50 years, you won't even have a place to live because you believe in the American way of consolidation of resources. Oh, yeah, 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 no, nah, man. So, you know, two kids... Hopefully, they'll be supportive of me when I'm old. And uh, yeah, man. Well, guess what? Most of the people who are walking around your city in X amount of years are going to look and act like this. And you're going to be the minority. Not just ethnically, but as far as your beliefs. Because you don't, know, you don't understand how things work. And that's just one of the curses that we are going to uh, suffer from. That's just one of them. We don't, we, don't even, we don't even recognize that. So, 
I could know what my life, I could know what my life is going to be like if I agree with God, if I agree with Jesus. So the Bible details people's lives from start to finish in many situations and the impact of emulating their decision making. It does. It does. It doesn't just show me people in their prime. It shows me the beginning and the end. It tells me what the societies experience when they follow these beliefs. People are so sensitive, or by that I mean weak-hearted, that they don't even want to assess the effects of their beliefs. What do I believe? And how are my decisions affecting my life? And what is my reference for good and bad? These are profound questions that demand answers because they're going to affect your eternal existence. And the Lord, really, God the maker, really wants us to evaluate. Hey, so we, we have to ask ourselves what we believe. Like, what do I believe? What do I believe? Because, and, 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 and. When 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 a man interacts with Jesus Christ, when a man interacts with Almighty God, God will tell that man what he believes and how his beliefs are affecting his life. God will tell that man how his beliefs. Hey, come here. Yes, Lord. You just did this. Yes, Lord, I did. This is what's happening over here now. Yeah, Lord, I was noticing that that had that. Let me connect that, those dots for you. You did this two weeks ago. Now this is happening. What is happening, this unpleasant circumstance, is a direct result of what you did two weeks ago. Really, Lord? Yes. I love you. You approach me daily. You obey me daily. When you don't, you confess it. And you strive to, to obey my voice. And because of that, I'm going to show you the benefits of when you obey, and I'm going to show you the consequences of when you are confused or proud and disobey. You see that right there? That's a result of what I told you not to do, but yet you did anyway. You see that right there? That's a result of when I told you to follow me in this circumstance, and you did. You see, I love you, and I'm going to prepare you for every test you have to take with daily exercises. Absolutely. I'm going to prepare. I'm going to make sure that you know exactly what's going on. Because a good father prepares his children. To say that you are unprepared is to either say that you are not a child of God or to say that God, your father, is bad. You're saying one of those two things. If you are saying that you're unprepared to live life, if you're saying your life is not good, then you are saying, my life is not good because I'm disobedient. You're admitting that. Or you're saying, my life is not good because no matter what I do, 
bad things still happen. As though the system is broken. But it worked for somebody. The system worked for, that's what this big old book is about. No, the Quran is not about this. The Quran is not about success. The Quran is about failure. Yeah, that's what the Catholic Church is about. Failure is what Orthodox Judaism is about outside of Jesus. There is no such thing as Orthodox Judaism outside of this writing right here. I don't care how many black garments you wear, yarmulkes you have on your head, tur twirly curls for your... Listen, do you agree with what Moses wrote? Yeah? Well, dress in all black as you want to. Grow your beard out all you want to. Your life is going to be failure. It doesn't matter how much money you make and how many of your kids are movie producers and, 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 and lawyers and doctors. Yeah. Your life is going to be full of failure. Absolutely. What are you? You're Hindu? You guys are very faithful to your gods over there in India, huh? Yeah, and this widespread disease and poverty and all kinds of natural disasters that destroy the Hindu temples. I wonder what those Hindu gods are doing for you all, other than killing you and making you poor. Is that offensive? Is that like combative language? In your mind, is it, do you say, oh, that's messed up? So, so if I give you the specifications for making a car... Are you going to include the specifications for making a refrigerator, the specifications for making a wooden fence, the specifications for, you know, agriculture? I want to mix agriculture with, you know, modern mechanics and engineering, and I want to miss, mix some astrophysics and how to go to the moon, and I also want to mix some how to play basketball in there. Come on. What kind of, what are you doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? And so when craziness manifests, we just shake our heads, shrug our shoulders, and then we just cry, you know, kumbaya, and like, help me, Jesus, and God. No, 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 and that's not time to call on God now. It's time to decide not to, start, not to mix all the recipes expecting the, 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 the right results. Like, what do you mean? You're saying that you don't need cotton to make a bottle of water? Yes. I'm saying that you don't need this to do that. That's exactly what I'm saying. I'm saying that you can't mix systems and think you're going to come out with a result. That you want. We cannot love confusion just because it seems pleasurable for the moment. Just because that person seems like he's happy. So, a couple of examples. I said this to our local congregation here at Jesus Ministries. I said to him, I said, listen. One day, two weeks ago, and one of the sisters just shared it with me. She just shared her experience with me. And if she were available, I'd have her share her experiences with you all. And hopefully she will. Or maybe she doesn't mind me sharing her experience. I probably won't. I'll share my own. I have enough of my own testimonies of how this works. So, a couple of weeks ago, I stopped at the local Burger King. And I got a two, ham two, two, two Whopper sandwiches. I'll have this sandwich and that sandwich. And in case you don't know, this video, this message is being filmed in the month of October. And for those of you that know modern, at least American culture, I'm sure this goes on outside of the United States and England, all over the world. Wherever the Catholic Church has gone, that's where Halloween is celebrated. Because Halloween is a Roman Catholic holiday. So, um, I was in, you know, I went to the Burger King and of course Burger King, their job is to make money 
off of the del- the customer's delight. If people like us and our products, they'll give us their money. So we've got to do what they want us to do to make money. So it's Halloween season. So they've got all kinds of horror, fearful, evil themes with their design and with their advertisement. So they're looking for things that have a deeper impact on people's minds and emotions when they see these themes. Because that's what the the goal is, to really impact people. So when I go to Home Depot, the hardware store, and they've got the Halloween decorations, they want imagery that's going to really impact your mind. Like, oh, how about this? Huh? Does that strike fear in your heart? No? Well, how about this? How's that? A little bit more, a little bit scarier? How about this? There you go, yeah. Really excites you, doesn't it? Yeah, it's really cool. So, you know, I was at Burger King two weeks ago. And as I'm there, as I'm there, you know, I see the Halloween stuff, but that's not going to affect this burger that I'm about to have. That's bread, lettuce, tomatoes, onions, beef, for what I know it is. And that's what I'm going to have. Oh, yes, ma'am. Put some cheese on there, please. And hold the mayonnaise. I don't want any mayonnaise on there. Thank you. Oh, yes, the other sandwich, you can put mayonnaise on that one. So I get the sandwiches. I saw the evil imagery on the bag, but I overlooked it. Uh, They do that. I don't believe in that garbage. That's what they want to do for advertising sake, even though I know that it's not just about advertising even though we respect the fact that there's a spiritual world and a physical world, and the physical world is being controlled by this spiritual world and the entities in it. For these people, that was just a good advertisement, a good advertising idea. So I got the bag of Burger King, and I brought it home, and we were having fellowship that night in the house. Wednesday nights, we are in our homes. So we are in the corporate setting. So we're at the corporate building Mondays, Fridays, and Sundays. Wednesday nights we meet in our we meet in our homes. So we were there on Wednesday night. We were here at my house at Wednesday on Wednesday night. So I get the bag. I eat the one burger. Of course, we thank God for it. Got to bless God for the food because um, you know. We need the we need the Lord to bless the food. We need not we need the food not to we need to be thankful for the fact that God gives us food to eat. And secondly, we don't need any bad physical problem with any physical problems because of the food. So we bless the food. Jesus, thank you for the food. You're the one that provided it for us. Purify it. Let it be a physical blessing to my body. And if there are any spiritual problems, and we'll talk about that in a second. We'll talk about that in a second. Brother Dave's going to tell you about that in a second. If, if I remember, you might have to say, Brother Dave, don't, if I forget, because I might forget. So, I don't want any physical problems from this food, right? So, I thank God for the burger, for the, for the Whopper, with no mayonnaise, but with cheese. I eat it. It's a blessing to me. It doesn't make me lethargic. It doesn't slow me down. I'll put the other burger in the refrigerator for Sister Melanie. So it's in there. So we're having service. You know, however many people are in the house, 15 people are there here at my house. We're worshiping God. Praise God. You're awesome. You're excellent. And I'm in prayer. I'm in prayer. They're in prayer. We're singing to God. They're singing to God. I'm focused on God. It's been about maybe 45 minutes. Focused on God, worshiping God, praising God. And then I feel this uneasiness. I feel this uneasiness. All of a sudden, things are changing or shifting. I'm, my feelings are, my mo- something's stirring my emotions in a bad way. I'm feeling a sense of uneasiness. I feel like something evil is around me. 
Because when you when you obey God, he'll tell you things. Hey, something evil is here. And so I'm feeling this uneasiness. I don't know what the uneasiness is. Like what's And so I'm focused on God still. And then the Lord puts the Burger King bag in my mind. That Burger King bag has really evil imagery on it. The developers, the advertisement people, they are digging deep within themselves and pulling from the aspects of the culture to communicate fear. And they are thinking about the most depraved things to communicate that through imagery. And Jesus said that what we see affects us. Oh, no, 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 no. I know you want to be ignorant and pretend that what you see doesn't affect you. But you can pretend all you want. But for those of us who don't like suffering, we're not going to pretend that what we see doesn't affect us because we agree with Jesus. Like, no, 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 I don't know what you're talking about. I agree with Jesus. No, Jesus is right. You're wrong. You're, no, no, Jesus is right. You can do whatever you want to do. Live life like, like driving on the interstate with no brakes, blindfolded in the opposite direction. But not, no, no. So I believe Jesus. I believe, I believe when Jesus said that the light, that world, the world is spiritual and that the physical world will oftentimes show you what's going on in the spiritual world, but that you need Jesus to connect the dots for you. And so I'm in prayer and all of a sudden, that Burger King bag comes to mind. Hey, there's evil, depraved, intentionally dark imagery on there. Good exists, God exists, he made it. Evil exists. They're trying to communicate evil. Get rid of it. I come out of prayer for a moment. I leave this living room where we're praying. I go into the refrigerator. I take the burger out of the bag. I look at the burger wrapping just to make sure that there's no imagery on this wrapping. Put the burger back in there. Take the bag. Take the 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 wrapper. Take the bag and I put it in the trash. Lord Jesus, any evil power, any any demons that have been given the right to occupy this place any curses that have been given that that have been activated curses of death of sickness of 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 anxiety all of the bad things that can come as a result of demons being present all of the bad things that can come as a result of evil being committed lord um whatever evil this is causing stop it remove it destroy it in jesus name we are your people you are our god i'm gonna get rid of this bag in jesus name and get rid of the bag put the bag in the trash i go back to prayer i can focus i'm concentrated i feel the peace of god great get rid of the bag after service everything's good we're, we're walking in the blessings of god the lord showed me that hey listen because a lot of us are okay with random chaos happening in our lives. Like, oh, yeah, that just happened in your life. You don't even know why, do you? Nope, you don't. You just shrug your shoulders and shake your head. Hmm? Yep, it just happened to the best of us. Happy, yeah, it happens to the best of us. Yeah, uh-huh. I know you, you like ignorance because they say ignorance is bliss. So, other circumstances, and this is my last one before we disconnect for the day, or at least for to, to right now. So, I'm in the house. It was before one of our church gatherings. And all of a sudden, I'm feeling these intense feelings of anxiety and depression seemingly these emotions came out of nowhere like oh man life is messed up 
I'm starting to feel bad emotionally. Feel sad, feel afraid, feel discouraged emotionally. Oh, man, what's going on? What's going on in the world? What's going on with my life? Now, Brother Dave does not pay attention to the news media. So it wasn't that. Brother Dave does not listen to crazy music or watch crazy television. In Jesus' name. Not because I'm better than you, but because I don't want to suffer. Oh, this guy thinks he's better than me because he doesn't watch TV. Uh, if I don't drink turpentine or if I don't go outside and chew glass, does that make me better than you? Like, you like chewing glass. I don't. I, I, I don't want that. I don't want that. If you want it, then do it. And, 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 but I don't want that. Like, so I'm not better than you. Because I agree that that's harmful. And you don't. Like, what's going on? I'm not better than you. I just don't want to. I, I don't like bleeding. You don't mind. So you do that. What? I agree with Jesus. He said that that'll cause that. I found that to be true. You do that. What's, what's, I didn't do, I didn't, I'm not making, what's going on? I'm not like doing anything. You like that, I don't. It causes you this. It doesn't cause me that because I don't do it because he's telling both of us not to do it. I'm not doing it. You're doing it. It's causing you that. It's not causing me that. So what's, what's going on? Like, what, why am I at fault? Because you, no. It doesn't make you arrogant because you don't drink gasoline or you don't jump off of 12-story buildings. Oh, he thinks he's better because he doesn't jump off 12-story buildings. He doesn't jump off bridges. Like, what? Okay. So I'm feeling all kinds of intense anxiety and anger and depression. More depression, not so much anger. Like I'm feeling afraid and depressed. Like, oh, what happened? And as I'm sitting there in the room, I, I've, not, I've prayed. I read the word that day. I, I, I'm, I'm fine, I think. And, you know, I finished preaching the word of God on, online. And then I just went into the house. I had a hot dog or something. A couple hot dogs. I forget what it was. No, I had some turkey. That's what it was. I had some turkey. I had some turkey. All of a sudden... Within about 15 minutes of me having this turkey, I'm feeling depressed. And I begin to sit with the Lord like, Lord, what's going on in my life? I'm depressed. And the thoughts came to mind, you are not depressed. You are feeling the feelings of that turkey. And when that came to mind, I had to evaluate what the legitimacy of that. Like, huh? How is that? Now, how can I evaluate that? I have to evaluate the recipe, the laws. Is there a law? Is there a spiritual law? Is there a physical law that says the life of the body is in the blood? Well, we call that DNA. But what about my experiences? Are my experiences stored in my bloodstream. When I make decisions and things happen to me. Or when I'm in environments and things happen to me. Where is. where? And I feel. I emotionally respond to my environment. I emotionally respond to things I see, hear, feel, taste and touch. When I feel those feelings. Where are those reactions, those chemical reactions to this traumatic circumstance or to that exciting circum circumstance, where do those, how, does those, how do those chemical reactions affect my code, my blood code line? Like, oh, trauma, or oh, excitement, joy. Where is that being stored? In my blood. The life of the body is in the blood. The Lord told the, the, Lord told the people that, hey, don't drink blood. And when you cook something, make sure the blood is cooked thoroughly. Because the life of the body is in the blood. So one of the things, one of the things that the Lord said is, don't eat food, meats that have been strangled. 
And he just says it. He doesn't specify why other than the fact that the life of the body is in the blood. So imagine, I'll use this as an, I'll use my water bottle. Let's say that there's a method of killing turkeys. Brother Dave does not watch, you know, how to kill turkeys for mass production and consumption. What if one of the methods for killing turkeys is strangulation instead of beheading the turkey and letting the blood come out? What if this turkey, right, these turkeys, oh, yeah, we got this from Purdue Farms. And Purdue Farms, their method for turkey killing, harvesting and killing, is they... Take the turkeys, they put the turkeys on these metal things, clamp the metal things around the turkey's neck, and they shake the turkey so violently that it breaks the turkey's neck, and that's it. Then they take the turkey, and then they cut the head off, you know, and defeather it and do other stuff. Or what if, before they break the neck, they go through this process of defeathering and boiling and then they break the neck what if the blood is still in the animal when the animal is killed or tr treated for killing what if the blood is not cooked out or boiled out or, or, or poured out what if the animal is not beheaded because that was the question what if you just break the turkey's neck and now it's dead why does why do the, why does the Holy Bible say don't eat to the Jews specifically, and also to the Gentiles also Acts fifteen don't eat strangled meats. Because the terror and this emotional suffering because you know animals have emotions, the the suffering from the traumatic death shook the turkey's neck broke turkey's neck like. Gobble, gobble, gobble. Broke the turkey's neck. So now the blood react. The blood is receiving the, f the fearful reaction. Because we're all survivors. We were created by God to survive. We're living creatures. Like, oh no, he's, gonna, he's broke. Oh, I broke our neck. Oh no, no, go dead. So now the blood records that. Oh, fear, fear, fear. So... They take the turkey, harvest the turkey, put, put har harvest, harvest the turkey, put the turkey on the shelf. Brother Dave goes, buys the turkey, cooks the turkey, feels good about what I cooked, and then all of a sudden, it's feeling depressed. It was turkey bacon, is what it was. Yeah, it was turkey bacon. All of a sudden, I'm feeling depressed and afraid. What's going on, Lord? I'm depressed. I don't know what's happening. I just preached the gospel. What's going on? My emotions are everywhere night right now. I'm afraid and angry. And the Lord just said, you, it's, it's what you ate. What I ate? Yes. Do you remember what you ate? I ate the turkey bacon. Yeah. It's making you feel that way. How? The life of the body is in the blood. However that turkey was killed, that's what you're, you're feeling. The feelings. The moment the Lord told me that, the feelings of depression and anxiety dissipated, went away. I no longer felt ang anxious or afraid or depressed. It immediately dissipated. Immediately, the moment the Lord told me that, I said, oh, so these are not my feelings? This is because of, some this is because of something that I ate? Lord, purify me. The moment I said that the feelings disappeared. Because as a child of God, he does not leave you subject to the random hardships of this phase of existence. That happened to me a week later. He ate some food, feeling depressed. Like, oh, what's going on? The Lord just reminded me, hey, what'd you just eat? I just ate this. That's what you're feeling. Pray against those feelings. I can't go and grab the packaging and discover that the turkey was killed by strangulation. But I do have a remedy when I happen to eat things, drink things, or I'm in an environment that's bad. I, I can be healed because we are sons of God. 
if we're not sons of God, but we want to say that we are, yet we add all kinds of laws and principles and conclusions that are not godly, then we're subject to the hardships of our world in ways that others, in, in ways that... In ways that the sons are not. We all go through hardships. The people who are outside of God, they are a, they are scheduled for more bad things. Simple as that. We're all going to go through bad things. The reasons for which we go through the bad things will differ. And the extent to which bad things are going to happen are going to differ. The frequency is going to differ. I go, yeah, man, you do that. You live that way. So your life looks like this, no matter how much money you have or how many people respect you. Your life looks like this. And him, he serves the Lord. So his life looks like that. Yeah. And you can go to God so that he connects the dots for you. Hey, this is why your life looks like that. Hey, this is why her life looks like that. Yeah. That's it. So I love you all. My hope is that you prosper and that you be excellent in Christ Jesus. My hope is that you agree that life is more than you see. My hope is that you understand that you can see more than what, what's there if you follow Jesus, if you commit your whole life to him so that you're not a slave or subject to the chaos of your environment. This is your brother David Williams with Jesus Ministries. And Lord willing, we'll talk with him in the next 24 hours.